This is the story of the wildest experience of my life, but it was also the most important character building experience of my life. If you've heard of ayahuasca, this is going to be a great ayahuasca perspective for you. And if you've not heard about ayahuasca, here's what I'll tell you. Human civilization has been around for a long time. They tell us that it all started only about 4,000, 5,000 years ago. Modern historians don't believe in that. Modern historians believe that it's been around for like more than 50,000, 60,000 years. There were some important ancient civilizations. Indian civilization was one of them. The Egyptian civilization was one of them. Another very important ancient civilization, which stretches back possibly beyond 50,000 years ago, is the Amazonian rainforest civilization. In the same way that we have Ayurved in India, the Amazonian civilizations have their own version of Ayurved where they talk about herbs and plants that are native to the Amazon rainforest. There's more than 2 million, 3 million species of plants that are already discovered in the Amazonian rainforest. And you know what? They're constantly discovering new species of plants. Now imagine out of all these 2 or 3 million plants, somehow some human being, and I doubt it was a human being, I do believe that there was some kind of divine intervention or alien intervention. But of all the plants in the Amazonian rainforest, you combine two of them. The leaves of one plant, the creepers or vines of another plant. You brew them together, you boil them together, and you create a drink. Like chai, like tea. You consume that drink and imagine that there's a spiritual ceremony attached to consuming that drink. There's someone who guides you through that spiritual experience created by consuming this natural drink. That person's called a shaman. The culture is called the shamanic culture. The drink we're speaking of is ayahuasca. It's currently being studied by neuroscientists all over the world because of its healing properties. Keep in mind, in this video, I am not promoting the use of ayahuasca. I don't want you guys to listen to this and say, Oh, I want to go into ayahuasca right now. It's not that. Let me get into the details. I've done ayahuasca myself. I'm going to be talking about the experience in detail. But it's also important for you to know that... You need to know the backstory of ayahuasca. What does it do? Science has found out that ayahuasca has the active compound called DMT or dimethyltryptamine. Dimethyltryptamine, when it crosses the blood-brain barrier, when it actually reaches your mind, a lot of it can break old neural patterns and can form new neural patterns. That means, imagine you're a kid, you're five years old, you're little, you're weak, some dogs on the road start chasing you. You get scared, you run away from them. And then there's a neural pattern that gets formed in your head. And the neural pattern explains to your mind, dogs are scary. At one point in my life, they chased me down the road. Therefore, associate your own internal fear with the concept of dogs. You grew up with that neural pattern. Dogs are scary, dogs are scary, dogs are scary. Go to your friend's house. Your friend's dog is extremely friendly, but you're still scared of that dog. Why? Because of your neural pattern. And this is one small instance. Imagine all the instances you go through in your life. All these multiple neural patterns that are formed in your head. Ayahuasca has the capability of destroying certain neural patterns and forming new neural patterns. The reason it's a combination of two plants is because... The leaves of that one plant have the active compound of DMT. But if you just consume that plant or a drink made from the leaves of that plant, your stomach acids destroy DMT. The creepers, the second plant in the drink, actually blocks out some of your stomach acids. And the active compound of DMT is therefore absorbed by your body and it can reach your brain by crossing the blood-brain barrier. Now, out of 2-3 to three million Amazonian plants, how did someone figure that? Let me combine this one and that one and I'll be left with ayahuasca. Nobody knows the origins of it. The only thing that people know is that it's been around for a while and that it's played a huge role in the human evolutionary process. It's helped a lot of people on a spiritual level. It's helped a lot of people grow into the better version of themselves. And in saying that, it is not a recreational drug. When we think about something like alcohol or marijuana, you do these things for fun. You do these things for recreation. They're fun to do. Even something like LSD and shrooms. 
are relatively on the more fun side and ayahuasca experience is never done for fun an ayahuasca experience and i'm speaking as someone who's done it shouldn't be done by everyone it is an intense experience please understand that what's the story my final year of engineering college i was listening to a podcast with graham hancock who's considered one of the world's most famous most respected historians he's doing a podcast with joe rogan joe rogan speaks a lot about ayahuasca on his own podcast graham hancock spoke about how he's done ayahuasca multiple times and every time he's done it he had become a better version of himself he had healed in some aspect he spoke about how ideally you should do it in the amazon rainforest you should go to south america and curate an experience for yourself you should find a legitimate shaman because there's a lot of fake shamans out there and there are some negative vibes associated with the term ayahuasca there have been ayahuasca deaths which aren't legitimately ayahuasca deaths their deaths caused due to those fake shamans who probably mix other substances with the ayahuasca call it ayahuasca sell it to tourists sell it to people who are looking for healing and actually cause more harm to them than benefit all right so please understand that that's one of the primary reasons you shouldn't go out looking for ayahuasca they say that with these sacred plants which are also part of ancient native american culture the plants always find you you never go out searching for those plants that's something i read and i never really believed that i was like okay cool whatever graham hancock also stressed on the fact that when you try experiencing an ayahuasca trip when you consume the drink when you consume the brew a shaman has to be around you he has to guide you through that trip because you open a whole new dimension of existence and it's very easy to lose your mind completely someone has to guide you through the trip it's very important to the process now he also said that the first part of the trip is where you'll either puke a lot or you'll cry a lot ayahuasca is a highly acidic substance that's the biological aspect of it that they say that it's so acidic that your stomach feels dirty that your stomach feels uncomfortable and throws up whatever is inside the spiritual aspect of throwing up in ayahuasca is that throughout your life you accumulate a lot of physical toxins because of your bad habits your bad eating habits your bad recreational habits and more importantly you accumulate a lot of emotional toxins painful experiences from your life hurtful experiences that are trapped inside you that even you didn't know are actually hiding in some corner of your being that's what you puke out it's a toxin release but it's extremely intense and it's usually accompanied by hallucinations so i listened to this podcast and i pretty much forgot about it cut to a year later when i began beer biceps i was very nervous i've spoken about my early struggles enough on this podcast people were saying all kinds of things people were telling me not to go down this road of becoming a youtuber there's no such career called a social media career and it's all fake and there was all these like voices which were pulling me down and in the middle of all this one day my dad comes up to me and he says that hey you know what before you begin your career let's plan a final family vacation and go to this place called seychelles so at that stage of my life i was so stressed and so unsure about what i was doing that i agreed pretty readily went to seychelles and i was trying to switch off from the world of early careers in that country on vacation with my family The beautiful thing about my family is that on vacation they let me be by myself. I go do my own thing. I was on the Seychelles beach and I started a conversation with this one person. I started talking about a lot of deep things. I explained what I do. Basically did my own version of a mini podcast with that guy and he mentioned shamanic culture to explain a certain concept to me. So the moment I heard shamanic I went back to that Graham Hancock conversation. I looked at him and I said, "Wait, you mean like ayahuasca shamans?" And then he looks at me and says, "Where have you heard that word, ayahuasca?" So I told him that, "You know what? This is what I know about it. I also know that it's a pretty intense experience. It's not recreational. While it can help you, it makes you face your worst fears in terms of hallucinations. You'll see the things you're scared of the most in your hallucinations, and then maybe it becomes a better trip later." He looks at me and says, 
don't believe everything you see or read or hear on the internet. If you want to know what ayahuasca is, experience it and then come to conclusions. So I looked at him and said, yeah, but for that, I'll have to go to South America to experience it, right? So he looks at me and says, what if I tell you that I'm a trained shaman and I'm carrying ayahuasca with me? And at that moment, I realized, has the ayahuasca reached out to me? I didn't reach out to it. And in the next moment, I thought to myself, no, no, I don't want to go through scary hallucinations. That's not my kind of thing. At that stage of my life, I was drinking a lot of alcohol, consuming a lot of cannabis. And I thought, I'm all right. I'm okay with this much. I'm just 22. I don't want to face my biggest fears. I met this guy constantly over the next two days and we weren't just talking about ayahuasca. We were talking about all kinds of topics. But he told me a few crucial things about ayahuasca. He said that that bad aspect of the trip, that first difficult part of the trip, it doesn't even happen to everyone. When you consume marijuana or alcohol, your body reacts to those substances and then creates a high or a state of existence within your own mind. When you consume ayahuasca, you're consuming a substance that's completely alive. It's got a soul and identity of its own. I'd also read these books by someone called Carlos Castaneda. I think the book was called Don Juan by Carlos Castaneda. He spoke about a very important concept. So ancient cultures from the Americas, that's the ancient American culture and South American cultures had these nine sacred plants. They considered particular plants and particular plant brews to be very important from a spiritual perspective. These plants, if consumed under the right circumstances, could help you grow a lot spiritually, but you needed the right circumstances. And each of these plants had what you can think of as a spirit attached to it. Okay, now imagine that you're alone in the room with one other person. Imagine that it's a man. It's just you and that man. Even if you close your eyes, and if it's your dad, your brother, you know that there's a masculine presence in the room with you. You feel a male energy. Now, in your head, the same scenario, you remove the man, you put a woman, you put your sister or your mum. You suddenly feel feminine energy. When I'm talking to you, you're feeling masculine energy through me. It's a guy talking to you. You're listening to a man's voice. Imagine that I was a woman, you'd feel a lot of feminine energy coming through the screen. Similarly, each of these plants had either masculine or feminine energies attached to them. And when you consume them under the right circumstances, you do feel an external presence. So say you do it alone with a shaman, you'll feel the presence of the shaman with you. And then you'll feel the presence of what they call mother ayahuasca. In your hallucinations, you might feel a feminine presence in the same room as you are. It's something very difficult to explain. So let me try breaking it down a little further. Different people have different kinds of hallucinations when they do ayahuasca. Someone will picture a female lion. Someone will picture a doll. Someone will picture a really scary looking lady. Someone will picture a beautiful lady. Their own version of mother ayahuasca. Similarly, there's another plant called peyote. It's not shrooms or magic mushrooms. That's a different plant. But peyote, there's a father figure that exists in association with peyote. So when people consume peyote, they feel a very strong masculine presence as a part of their hallucinations, as a part of their experience. And everyone who does peyote speaks of father peyote. Every single person that does ayahuasca speaks of mother ayahuasca a female presence, which kind of sounds scary on a surface level. But trust me, it was a huge aspect of the ayahuasca experience and it actually made it a lot nicer. Now, a lot of skeptics will be listening to this podcast and say, this guy is talking about drugs. He's talking about hallucinations. Oh my God. I completely understand where you're coming from. But this is societal conditioning. All your life, you've been told that, listen, you can drink alcohol, which is an extremely harmful substance for your body and your mind and your spiritual journey. But because we've been brought up in a society where it's legal, you think it's all right. Similarly, 
a substance like cannabis, which is harmful if done in excess, but it's way less harmful than alcohol. That's also villainized in our society because it's clubbed with other drugs like cocaine or heroin, which are actually extremely harmful for your body, much more harmful than alcohol is. Without getting into the physiological details of the substance, I believe that you should trust 50,000 years of wisdom rather than trusting laws which were made in the last 100 years, primarily out of fear, primarily out of political organizations controlling their own citizens, telling us that you need to think like this because these substances are bad. And if you do this, you are bad. You are a drug addict. It doesn't work like that. Let your own experiences decide your own opinions. Coming back to the story. He explained to me that the ayahuasca experience would be very individualistic. So what I read online was, again, specific to those individuals. What I would go through in the ayahuasca experience would probably be very, very different. So that got me thinking. And I honestly didn't know what direction I should go in. That also happened to be the same day that I went for my first ever deep sea dive. Like the one they do in Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara with, you know, scuba diving equipment. I went on a guided dive. Basically, someone held my hand but took me really deep. I think I went 36 feet deep underwater. I saw a whale on my first dive. I saw a whole underwater world. I saw sharks near me. Kind of opened up my perspectives. You know how a deep sea dive starts? You sit at the edge of the boat and then they tell you to just fall off the edge. You need to trust that the water will just support you. So you're kind of scared because you're kind of falling into an open ocean far away from the land. But you just go with it. You fall backwards. You land in the ocean. You look underneath you and there's colorful fish. You were able to see all those colors and all those experiences because you decided to just take that plunge. So while I was swimming underwater with all these fish, with that whale that I saw with those sharks, it struck me that I should probably just go for it. Because it kind of was like ayahuasca reached out to me. I didn't go out searching for it. I knew what it was. I'd studied about it out of interest, but I never thought I'd end up doing it. So after my dive, I went back to the surface. I met that guy. I told him that tonight, we'll do an ayahuasca trip. He was a shaman. A shaman guides you through the experience. Now, when you consume ayahuasca, some shamans will also consume some of it along with you. And some people say that your shaman will kind of share your experience. They'll also be a part of your whole journey along with ayahuasca. Here's what I saw. He called me to his room. He did a few rituals, like how we have mantras in our country. He said a few of his shamanic mantras. He poured out two shots of ayahuasca. It was like this deep brown liquid, which was smelling bitter. So I looked at the brown liquid. And that same thought of just falling into the ocean took over my head. I just took the glass, downed it. Best choice I ever made, especially for my career. I'll come to why later, but let's talk about the experience first. So for half an hour, nothing happens. Everything's still normal. My shaman told me specifically that the moment you start feeling something, we'll switch the lights off and we'll lie down. Nothing happened initially. And then suddenly, I look at the walls. I look at the floor. I look at the roof. And everything is becoming a little more jelly-like. The solidity vanished from the floor. I looked everywhere and everything was becoming a little more liquid. I looked at my shaman and he was kind of moving. And this was the beginning of the trip. I told him that I feel like something weird is happening. And he said, okay, it's begun. So he made me lie down, switched off the lights. He also lay down. And then he just told me to close my eyes. I closed my eyes and the one thing that my ayahuasca trip was defined by was the presence of animals. I have no idea why, but animals were something that I was always drawn to. Even as a child, I'd watch Nat Geo all day. I'd watch the Discovery Channel all day. And I saw a oh, big whale just swallowing me. When I went inside the whale's mouth, there was this long road. And suddenly... I felt like I was kind of going down a car in that road. 
but it wasn't a car i was just sliding down that road in some kind of a seat and i didn't know what was happening i opened my eyes and everything vanished everything was normal i wasn't even feeling kind of high or woozy or anything and i just turned to him and i said hey you know what this is happening he said no no you're supposed to close your eyes and just keep experiencing it go deeper in your trip I swear to god I was feeling completely sober and I asked him that is it normal he said yes and this is why it's not a recreational drug it doesn't take your senses away from you you're completely in control and honestly if you want it to stop it will stop but if you want it to go deeper that's where you'll get your answers one important point I want to put across to you guys and this is something I forgot to mention earlier in this podcast you have to have an intention when you're doing your ayahuasca trip so what was my intention at this stage of my life i was extremely underconfident i had no self belief i was constantly being told by my family by my friends by the world that this beer biceps choice was the wrong one and i was going to fail and i'd then have to go back and re-enter the rat race which i'd run away from which i make videos about why you shouldn't be entering So I was very afraid at this stage of my life. At the start of the trip, my shaman had also asked me to write down the question that I had for Mother Ayahuasca, the question that I wanted answered. So I wrote two questions. The first question was this beer biceps thing that I've started. Is it the right direction for my life? Am I doing the right thing? And the second question I'd asked is that if I really want success in my life, what's the one thing I should be adding to my personality, or what's the one thing I should be working on? Two extremely simple questions. Coming back to the experience, I'd asked these two questions about life, but what I got in return was animal imagery. I'm the kind of guy who even today. when i have dreams those important dreams always contain an element of some animal and they say that in the study of dreams there's lots of websites all about dreams you guys should check this out so say you have a lion doing some particular thing in your dream attacking you or you riding the back of a lion it all means something animal presence in your dreams means something and it happens to a lot of people who are on spiritual journeys so that's what i was seeing in my ayahuasca experience and keep in mind at that point my spiritual journey had not begun i was just seeing animals so i felt my shaman next to me i felt he was also on the road with me and suddenly me and him were turning into different animals we were lions at first then we turned into horses then we turned into dragons and we were just going down this road so once i kind of made peace with this weird hallucination i looked up around me away from the road and i saw these little windows and those windows contained key memories from my life now i wanted to actually enter some of those memories like almost like time travel i wanted to travel back to those important character building moments in my life and the moment that wish popped up in my head this masquerade mask actually entered the hallucination it was a feminine looking masquerade mask with wings it kind of just settled down like a feather right in front of me while i was traveling down that road it was traveling with me it was floating near me it kind of landed on me it touched me i touched the mask i realized that that was my version of mother ayahuasca weird right and mask took me away and asked me okay what memory do you want to enter and i said i want to go there i went into one of those windows it was a memory from my childhood it was my sister and myself sitting and watching tv after school complete peace you're done with your homework it's probably a friday evening you're watching some cartoon with your sister it's a very happy peaceful childhood memory i stayed there for a while i felt like the concept of time got extremely stretched out i felt like i could probably stay there for like a month in the timeline of that dimension and then come out and it would have probably been just a few seconds in the real dimension 2 seconds in the real dimension could be 
as long as you want in the ayahuasca dimension so i spent some time in that memory as a third person just seeing these two kids myself and my sister kind of like a weird time traveling experience came out of that trip entered another trip where i saw a negative experience i think my parents were shouting at me about something and they were shouting about something in specific so i heard that whole shouting experience as a third person viewer and it kind of taught me certain things about myself in one of our old podcast we spoke about implicit memories things that have happened in your childhood someone shouted at you some negative experiences which leave scars forever and you don't even know why you have those scars as an adult you don't know why you have certain fears negative neural patterns you don't know why you think in a certain way you don't know why certain foods trouble you why certain words trouble you why certain experiences suddenly start troubling you and it's because of all these implicit memories i was caused my first experience of re-experiencing implicit memories and i went inside multiple windows and i found all these old implicit memories of myself and a lot of my current thought patterns in life made sense to me oh that's why i kind of fear the dark oh that's why i kind of doubt myself so much oh okay this is why i feel like i procrastinate too much and i started also getting the solutions in my head i didn't know what was happening but then it also struck me that hold on it's been a while since i've been in this trip am i not supposed to puke That's usually what happens, right? That's what I read online that you puke after ayahuasca. But I wasn't even feeling slightly nauseated. I was feeling fine. I was feeling happy. I was enjoying the experience. I was time traveling. I was like experiencing this beautiful scenario that I didn't know your mind was capable of experiencing. And you know what else I was experiencing? This is very crucial for the mood of this story. In video games, imagine that you have a life meter that's as big as a hundred points. When you go to a next level of a video game, sometimes the video game rewards you and says, "You know what? From hundred points, you're going to go to hundred and ten points in terms of your life meter." Imagine I had a happiness meter that locked at about a hundred. Ayahuasca allowed me to access a new dimension of happiness. it was a slightly more elevated level of happiness i was feeling happier than i'd ever felt and i was actually at this point in my life where i was feeling a lot of self doubt and there wasn't that much happiness in my life but ayahuasca unlocked something new in me i didn't know what was happening but i kept continuing down that trip i also felt a strong presence of god for the first time in that trip while i've prayed a lot in my childhood i wasn't a spiritual kid growing up i just prayed i, I knew that there's one god there's a higher power and you got to express gratitude you've got to kind of ask for what you want but that's all that the concept of god was for me so ayahuasca mother ayahuasca that masquerade mask was leading me down that ayahuasca journey and at the same time i felt like a masculine presence which i consider the presence of god came down and led me along the road along with mother ayahuasca the two elements of the higher power the feminine element which is mother ayahuasca the masculine element which was father god once i felt this presence of parents i felt exactly for those elements the way i feel for my parents okay a mom and a dad once i felt that combined presence i went back to my original question i said that am i doing the right thing in life and the straight up answer was hold on let us show you so the two hallucination parents changed up the entire trip for me from experiencing that road and those animals and those time traveling windows the scenery changed into the side of a highway there was no cars on the highway i could just see the horizons on the two ends so the parents showed me one end of the horizon and i heard this massive sound like something huge was coming my way before i knew it i saw this big fireball just flash across me it came from one horizon went across me and went to the other horizon and as it went its size kept increasing the ayahuasca that element of god looked at me and told me that is your career if you continue down this current path that you're on that's what this particular road can lead you to and then i said what about my second question the second question was 
what do I need to add to my mind in order to maximize my success? And the parents kind of looked at me and said, you've got everything that you need to succeed other than self-belief. You have zero self-belief, which was very true at that stage of my life. I'd spent four years in engineering college hearing insults from teachers who are upset with their own lives. Hearing my parents say that your marks aren't great. I hope you're going to do something in life. Hearing my friends say things like, why are you not going abroad? You're making the wrong choice by staying back in India. Just hearing negative feedback that had just beaten down my self-belief to zero points on 100 points. A very negative mind space to be in. At the moment they told me that you need to incorporate the concept of self-belief in your existence, everything faded away. The trip stopped happening. There was nothing, there was just darkness. You know, when you close your eyes, you just see darkness. There was just that in my head. I open my eyes and I'm back in that hotel room. I look at my shaman. I woke him up. Throughout this experience, he was doing a few chants. He was doing a few shamanic chants, but I was too withdrawn from him. I was too within myself, within my own mind, within my own experience. I looked at him. I was full of emotion. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't explain my entire trip to him. But I said that the end of the trip was this. Those two questions that I wrote on that piece of paper, these are the answers. It's the right choice. My career is going to be one fireball of a career. But I need to tell myself that I am capable of killing it in my own life. And the shaman looked at me and asked me, what about the negative aspect of the experience? So I looked at him and I just started crying. 22-year-old buff powerlifter just weeping like a little baby. Crying. I said, I don't know, there was no negative experience. It was just so happy, powerful and positive. And he looked at me and said, this is the height of the negative aspect of this experience. Tears, that's it. That's the only negative aspect of it. Because you're probably not capable of handling more negativity at this point. Maybe in the future when you're slightly stronger mentally and if you try doing ayahuasca again, maybe you'll have a more intense negative experience. But at this stage of your life, ayahuasca has only given you what you can handle. And I looked at him and I said, yes, that's probably true. I was a different person after that day. I didn't tell my parents about it. I've still not told them in detail about this experience. But I swear to God, I felt like one personality entering that ayahuasca experience and another personality exiting from it. That actually led me to researching a lot more about ayahuasca, the scientific aspects of it, the biological aspects of it. And of everything I read, that neural pattern thing I told you guys about, that it creates new neural patterns, that was something I experienced in an extremely strong way. I felt like I was more powerful. I felt like someone gave me an extremely powerful sword called self-belief. I read other people's accounts of doing ayahuasca and everyone said that it gave them the weapon that they needed at that stage of their life. There's almost no one who's had a negative ayahuasca experience. Very rarely on the internet do you come across someone who says that, okay, you know what, I regret doing it. Most people say that it was a character building experience. But it's very, very, very crucial to know it is not safe to go out searching for ayahuasca experiences. And I feel you shouldn't. There's two reasons why. I'll explain the scientific reason first. The scientific reason is that there's a lot of people who are crooks. Lots of fake shamans out there. The shaman was legitimate. He had explained a lot more details to me, which I haven't spoken about on this podcast. But I knew for a fact that he was a legitimate shaman. He knew what he was talking about. He was trained by shamans in the Amazon rainforest. There's a lot of people who are just mixing and matching chemical substances and selling it as ayahuasca. And that's why it's important not to go out looking for it. But if you are looking for it, I'm going to ask you this. Are you looking for it because you want to experience it? Or are you looking for it because you want to add some element within your character? You want to heal something within yourself. Ayahuasca is primarily for people who have lived out life enough, who have been broken enough by life, 
to need some kind of healing healing is the key word later in life i discovered meditation strangely thanks to the same shaman i met him about 6 months later in india he came to india and he explained how he had stopped doing ayahuasca and he had gotten into this thing called meditation he explained basic om chanting meditation to me and keep in mind this guy is a white european guy all right he got into om chanting meditation sitting in one place taking a deep breath keeping your back straight and when you breathe out you go om he said it was one of the greatest healing experiences of his life 20 minutes of om chanting meditation every single day and i asked him that is it the same as doing ayahuasca and he gave me this analogy which i completely agree with he said that what is ayahuasca basically it's an experience that floods your brain with dmt and that dmt is what makes a trip happen what breaks neural patterns what makes neural patterns what changes the structure of your brain dmt is a substance that can be produced within your body as well within your mind is something called a pineal gland in pop culture the pineal gland is also referred to as the third eye teesri aankh the opening to another dimension the pineal gland gets stimulated when you do deep meditations especially when you practice daily meditations here's the analogy he gave me while ayahuasca is like downing a barrel full of whiskey in one go meditation is like having a sip of whiskey one sip at a time so each meditation session won't be as powerful and life changing as one ayahuasca session but in the long term meditation daily meditation does stimulate the production of dmt within your mind that causes that state of bliss that causes that state of extended happiness that changes the structure of your mind over time but most importantly it helps you level up it helps you level up by healing you from within that's how i slipped into that process of deep meditations and that's why i promote the idea of meditation this much it's basically the same thing they say that your brain is flooded with dmt only at three moments within your existence the first is when you're born the second is when you die and that's why they say my life flashed before my eyes remember that time travel analogy i gave you about my own ayahuasca experience when your brain's flooded with dmt you don't have a correct concept of time the concept of time changes up time feels stretched out that's what happens near your death when you know you're going to die time feels stretched out you go through an extremely intense dmt style experience because your brain is flooded with dmt the third moment is in very vivid dreams where crazy stuff is happening within your dreams you're flying you're controlling the shape of buildings around you that's when your brain is flooded with a little bit of dmt but the fourth way to release dmt naturally in your mind is by stimulating your pineal gland over time through daily meditation I've never wanted to do ayahuasca after that day. There's been no urge for that. But as I've gotten into deeper meditation, as I've gotten into deeper spirituality, I've reached a stage and a depth in my meditation where I do get lost in my own mind. Sometimes my meditations get so deep that I lose my sense of identity. I don't remember that I'm a YouTuber. I don't remember whether or not I'm a man or a woman. I don't remember my own name who I am what I do I just have a sense of me being someone who's within their own meditation focusing on my breath that's what my focus boils down to these kind of strange experiences happen through deep meditation so for all of you who stayed and listened to this podcast till this point I'm sure you're very intrigued by the concept of ayahuasca but I stress on this statement once again don't go out chasing it if it has to come to you it will come to you you don't choose ayahuasca ayahuasca chooses you but what i do urge you to do is heal yourself take a deep dive into the world of spirituality if you do want to flood your brain with dmt you don't have to go to the amazon rainforest 
you have to get into a habit of daily meditation and go deeper into that spiritual journey as my career has unfolded i look at that ayahuasca experience and i realize that it made me realize that such intensely deep spiritual experiences are possible you can feel the presence of mother ayahuasca and father god and these big fireballs and future predictions and time travel all these larger than life experiences are possible in this world within our existence you're brought up in a certain world being told go to school go to college go get a job go have kids go do this go do that it's a controlled environment but there's a complete dimension out there that's waiting to be tapped into that's what you need to remember and that opened up the possibility of personal change through spiritual journeys and through meditation so if i feel like meditation is the single biggest factor in my life today that possibility of meditation began in that ayahuasca journey and that's why i always stress that doing ayahuasca was the one spiritual turning point of my life where i became open to a lot of concepts that i didn't know exist i used to be that guy who would make fun of people like myself who promote the idea of meditation who promote the idea of these crazy experiences like ayahuasca and now i'm that guy who's talking about it in podcasts and on youtube final message of this video stay open to all kinds of experiences and please explore the spiritual world there's a lot of self discovery and all kinds of growth whether that's career growth whether that's growth in relationships whether that's growth in your own personal empathy it begins with spirituality reading spiritual books meditating daily and listening to different perspectives thank you guys i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the ranveer show